Hello, bonjour, welcome. My name is Paul Keith, business advisor here at the World Trade Center Winnipeg. I would first like to begin by respectfully acknowledging that this webinar is coming to you from Treaty One territory, traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, OJ Cree, Dakota, and Denny peoples, and on the national homeland of the Red River Metis. Thank you for joining our webinar, The Importance of a Business Plan. So I first wanted to start by acknowledging you for taking the time uh, to show up and learn about this aspect of your business today. Uh, it's easy for business owners to get caught up in their business, uh, failing to work on it, uh, especially on the things that don't really seem exciting, uh, you know, like writing a business plan. Um, by investing your time and energy into this process, you've already separated yourself from the competition and you're greatly increasing your chances of success. I've always liked the quote, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Because you're here learning about this process, it goes to show that you're probably the type of person who stays curious uh, and cares about well-executed planning, both great characteristics of uh, being a good business owner. So go on and give yourself a pat on the, on the back for taking the next steps on your business journey, writing a business plan. Uh, and also just know that myself and the rest of the WTC Winnipeg team, we're excited uh, that you're here and, and uh, know that we're here to support you. So in today's session, you're going to get a broad overview of a business plan. With this foundation of knowledge, you'll better be able to navigate your business moving forward. We're going to cover what a business plan is, how a business plan will benefit your business, common mistakes, best practices for a successful business plan, uh, and at the end of the session, I'll share some resources that you can use uh, to help you on your business planning journey. And, and then we'll have some time to dive into questions at the end of the session. So let's get into it. First off, what is a business plan? Well, a business plan is simply a document that outlines how you will achieve your business objectives. It can range from 20 to 40 pages long, covering your financial projections, marketing strategy and analysis, operations, risk mitigation, and much more. You'll constantly be referencing and updating this document throughout your entire business life cycle. Uh, it's not a one and done project. A well-written business plan helps you create clear goals and objectives, map out the best means of achieving them, and track progress along your journey. In short, a business plan helps you make better decisions. Now, some people will point to, uh, you know, the successful startups in Silicon Valley that started in a garage to making millions without a formal business plan. But in reality, these are the outliers. And even with them, there is still usually some level of proactive thinking, planning, and, and understanding of their business and industry as a whole. A study in the Journal of Small Business Management found that the fastest growing companies usually have business plans. And another study back in 2010 of roughly 11,000 companies found that proper planning improves business performance, but not just for the startup, even more so with existing companies. So whether you're a startup or already an existing business, a business plan will benefit you no matter what stage. Here's a great quote from entrepreneur, author, and business coach, Kevin J. Donaldson. Going into business, without a business plan is like going on a mountain trek without a map or GPS support. You'll eventually get lost and starve. So you don't want that to happen. You need the map that will help guide you the entire way. And after all, failing to plan is planning to fail. As the saying goes, you don't want to leave your business to assumptions and guesses. So why do you need a business plan? Well, it's really going to help you in three core areas, viability, funding and strategy. So viability, you want to ensure that you're pursuing the right endeavors, optimizing your operations and procedures and mitigating as much risk as possible. Uh, when making a sound business plan, you're forced to research and ask yourself lots of hard questions to gain a deeper understanding of your business operations. A solid business plan helps to address some of the most common reasons a business fails. In fact, about 50% of businesses will still be in operation after five years of starting. Some of these reasons are not understanding market need, not having enough capital, uh, lack of the right team, uh, for example, you know, possessing the adequate skills and attitude required, 
not identifying competition effectively, failing to create a good pricing strategy. Uh, there's lots. So a business plan helps you cover yourself in each of these areas and more. Next, secure funding. So businesses with a business plan are two and a half times more likely to secure, secure funding from lenders. So think about if a friend asks you for money in support of their new business, you most likely ask them lots of questions to get a better understanding of the business. You wouldn't just blindly hand them over cash uh, because they said it's a great business idea, Eric, trust me. Uh, by sharing a good business plan, you help to communicate effectively to a lender that you've done your due diligence and this helps them to minimize their risk. And then lastly, with strategy and execution. So a business plan keeps your entire operation focused on the right path uh, and helps you respond and adapt appropriately to internal and external forces that will inevitably present themselves throughout your venture. You'll be able to make be uh, better, smarter decisions and grow much faster. Companies that write and regularly review their plans have been shown to grow 30% faster than those that don't have a business plan. So what makes up a business plan anyways? Well, there's a few key sections that are found in a good business plan, and I'll give a broad overview of each so you can get a general idea of what's required. First, there's the executive summary. This comes first in your business plan, but it should be prepared last. It's designed to encapsulate all the other elements of your business plan into a compelling pitch. And it's usually about a single page in length, no more than two. Uh, you'll want to describe who you are, who you help, how you help them, and why you're in business. Lay out the vision as clearly and concisely as possible. Next, we have the value proposition and, and your products and services. So you can think of the information on this slide helping to form your elevator pitch. So what do you come up with? You'll want to practice often so you're ready for the pitch when the time comes. So what exactly are you selling? This is the direct offering being sold to your clients and customers, which delivers the value proposition. Is it a product, a service, or possibly a bundle of both? Next, what's your value proposition? You want to highlight what makes your business shine and makes you unique. Why would a customer turn to you rather than a competitor? This is also referred to as your USP or unique selling proposition. What's the key benefit your solution provides? Try to emphasize the one key benefit your solution offers rather than writing out feature after feature. You should articulate clearly the problem that your product or service solves. So some important questions to reflect on, what value are you providing? What problem are you solving? And what customer needs are you satisfying? Next is the market analysis section. This is all about identifying your ideal customer, learning competitor insights, and gaining knowledge on your industry as a whole. So this is where market research comes in. And when it comes to this, there are two types, primary and secondary market research, and you'll want a blend of both ideally to solidify your plan. So primary market research is research you do that provides information that doesn't exist already. It's usually highly specific to your business, and this can be done with surveys, interviews, focus groups, etc. Then there's secondary market research, uh, which is research that comes from existing sources. So things like census data, existing research studies, industry reports, etc. And this is the type of market research that we do here at the World Trade Center at Winnipeg. So we have access to many private databases to help you get an understanding uh, on demographics, industry reports, competitor lists, and much more. Secondary research can be more general, but it helps to give you a bird's eye view of your industry as a whole and where it's headed. And you can actually submit a re research request through our website, and I'll make sure to link it in the slides here as well. Next, we have the Quarters Five Forces exercise, which is a great tool you can use to help in your industry analysis. It's a framework developed back in 1979 by Harvard Business School professor Michael E. Porter. It identifies and analyzes five competitive forces that shape every industry and helps to determine the strength and weaknesses of a given industry. It's often used to identify an industry structure to better determine the business's overall corporate strategy. The five forces laid out in the framework are one, competition in the industry, two, potential of new entrants in the industry, three, power of suppliers, four, 
uh, power of customers, and then lastly, five threat of substitute products coming to the market and industry. So I highly recommend you look into this further to get a solid understanding of these forces and how they impact your business. Again, this will be linked in the slides. And then lastly, competitor analysis. This is a tool that you might already be familiar with or have completed. Um, this is here to help you identify companies um, direct and indirect competitors and to describe how this affects your position in your respective industries. So a few example factors you might want to consider when writing up a good competitor's profile is their positioning, sales channels, customer service support, you know, things like reputation, uh, pricing, uh, target audience, uh, their location, quality of deliverables, and much more. After starting your Porter's Five Forces activity, you'll find yourself with a starting point for your possible competition, which you can then expand on in your competitor's analysis. Another tool to use when conducting your industry and market analysis is one, again, that you might be familiar with, a SWOT analysis. And this is a great exercise which helps you identify your company's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So your strengths and weaknesses are usually internal characteristics of your business, whereas the opportunities and threats tend to be external forces. So strengths can be your competitive advantage. What does your business do well? Weaknesses are the challenges and what might harm the company internally. To help identify your external threats, you can leverage a pestle analysis, which you'll learn about later when I cover risk assessment and contingency planning. It's also important to highlight that a potential threat can also turn out to be a great potential opportunity in the future. So keep that in mind when you're working through this exercise and looking to the future of your business. And a quick note on the SWOT, Porter's Five Forces, Competitor Analysis, and Pestle. These are all tools that should be built upon each other uh, and really considered in light of the bigger picture, your business as a whole. Reference each of these models um, you know, in unison to really help create a better and deeper understanding where your business fits into uh, its respective industry. The next section is our marketing strategy. It's, this is here where you'll want to list out a few of the key strategies you'll implement in order to find and reach your target customer. A marketing strategy is ultimately the direction your company takes to solve your customers' problems and add value. Areas to consider and leverage are your branding, positioning, pricing, location, promotion, and the marketing tools required to meet your company's objectives. An important point, make sure that your method is aligned with the research you've done. So for example, you might live in Brandon, Manitoba and are looking to get into selling a new health beverage. You've realized that your target market is mostly health conscious 20 year olds. So with this information, you might wanna think twice before running those newspaper and radio ads where a, a better sound marketing, uh, content marketing strategy, leveraging the right social media platforms like Instagram or TikTok might be a better play. Then we have customer personas. To further help your marketing endeavors, it really helps to clearly identify who you're trying to help. This is where customer personas come in. It's important to understand your demographics. So these are the age, gender, location, household income, et cetera, of your audience. Psychographics, so why they buy, uh, their purchasing and behaviors and spending habits. And then possibly firmographics, which are highlighted characteristics uh, in organizations used in B2B. So remember, everyone is not your audience. You need to be specific on who your offering is for. And it's helpful to remember the riches are in the niches. The next section is operations, management, and internal control. This section is designed to explain your business model and how the business will operate. You'll create a clear structure of the necessary processes and procedures that will help you deliver your product or service to the marketplace. And this is why it's crucial to understand your business model, as the process will change depending on the model. Will you be service-oriented, retail, manufacturing, e-commerce, or possibly tech-based? A few areas of operational activities include research and development, manufacturing and production, inventory management, logistics, as well as human resource and internal company policy needs. And I'll expand more on some of these here. So human resource needs. You'll want to describe what your company's human resource needs are. Will there be employees now or later? Will there be contractors or subcontractors? What about a benefits plan? 
other costs to consider in your financial projections and analysis is if you're hiring employees, uh, you know, they'll need CPP, EI, vacation time, pay, all of that. These are costs that add up quickly, so you want to make sure that you understand these in detail. Internal company policies, it's really important to understand what these are because this will help your business meet the requirements of many key stakeholders in your business, whether that's internal or external. So CRA, suppliers, customers, employees, you know, uh, CEOs, leaders, co-founders, etc. Many businesses who fail to comply or even to simply understand these requirements can lead to a failure of the business, which is actually very common. Internal company policies will describe a wide array of activities, such as if your company needs to charge GST or RST, uh, describe any industry specific requirements like WCP or WCB, um, workplace health and safety training, et cetera. Uh, will there be credit and accounts receivable? Uh, if you have identified key suppliers, who are they and what are their credit terms? Who will handle the financial records? You'll want to identify any key insurance permits, license, and rules and regulations required for your business operations. Next is risk assessment. And all business carries risk, both internally and externally, and it's up to you to understand where it might present itself to the best of your ability. You don't want to leave this up to chance to find out and then react in a moment's notice. It's important to plan for all scenarios so you can respond appropriately rather than react. And a great tool to do this is a pestle analysis which uh, helps to identify external risks and threats. And you can think of this back to the SWOT analysis. So there's the political, economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal aspects. And I want you to dive into each of these. Um, uh, there's a list of different um, you know, elements from each one that you can dive into and just make sure that you're really touching on each of these to get a good understanding of the risks that uh, are posed within your industry and business. Then we have financial planning, uh, and this is one of the most challenging aspects of the business plan uh, when talking to a lot of entrepreneurs, um, and it's used for many purposes. You'll want to identify all of your startup costs and financial requirements in your business plan to ensure the feasibility of your business long term and to maximize your chances of getting funding. So you can use utilize pro forma statements, which are financial projections to identify financing needs, assess feasibility, and determine potential cash shortfalls. So pro forma statements include a balance sheet, an income statement, uh, and a cash flow budget. So the balance sheet is like a snapshot of your business. It shows your company's assets and how they've been paid for. The income statement considers your operating activities over a given period of time. So the simple formula is revenue minus expenses equals net profit. And then the cash flow budget measures company cash on hand based on how the cash is coming in and moving out. You can also use a break uh, break even point analysis to identify what the break even point is uh, in your company. Uh, it's good to share a brief analysis of results for years one and two of your business operations. You'll also need to understand your revenue models such as bundling, subscription, direct sales, and lastly, be sure to define all of your costs, both variable and fixed. Variable costs are the costs that change as volume changes. So you could think of commissions, delivery costs, raw materials. Fixed costs are costs that change independent of volume. So rent, salaries, utility bills, insurance, et cetera. And more key insights to understand um, for financial planning are financial ratios. And there are a few key ones to really get a hold of. Um, no. One is leverage ratios. So how are you using long-term debt to support your business? Next are liquidity ratios. What cash and assets do you possess that can cover your debts? Um, and then profitability ratios. Measure financial viability and can show a comparison to other businesses in your industry. So lenders will be very interested in seeing these numbers as they effectively measure the performance of your business and can highlight potential problems. And I shared a link in this slide to BDC's Entrepreneur Toolkit, which is a really get great resource. It expands on these ratios in much better detail than I could get into during this presentation. So definitely encourage you to check that out. 
Lastly, you'll want to include an appendix section, and this is here to organize your company's plan concisely in one centralized place. Uh, it includes all the additional information that doesn't fit neatly into your business plan, but supports everything in the plan in more detail. And all of this information should be easily referenced and organized. So some of this information might be marketing materials, designs, contracts, you know, market research, charts, licenses, et cetera. And now that you know a few of the uh, key reasons why you need a business plan and understand some of the important components of it, let's take some time to dive into the common mistakes when crafting your company's business plan. And a poorly written business plan will drastically lower your chances of receiving uh, investment, impair your marketing campaigns, lead to poor cash flow, and many other negative outcomes, including the end of your business as you know it. So here are a few of the traps that business owners fall into when writing their business plans. One is analysis paralysis. So getting caught up in the details and specifics early on while failing to execute is a common trap owners fall into. In the beginning of your business, you need to capture just the right amount of information that will help you take action and then make informed decisions based on your knowledge and experience. This is why a business model canvas, which you'll find in the resource section at the end of the slides, can help you articulate your business idea quickly in the beginning and then allow you to go deeper in specifics as you move along your venture's journey. When it comes to fully articulating your plan, one of the common areas people become the most overwhelmed with is financial analysis. So it's imperative that you seek help and guidance if you need it. Don't give up simply because you don't understand. Successful businesses are usually run by owners that seek help when they don't know something. Another mistake is not revisiting and updating the plan. So it's very common for owners to get a plan to put together you know, during their initial stages to prove viability or secure funding, and then later to fail to update the document based on the ever-changing uh, business landscape that they're in. So a business plan is a living document. You need to make time to revisit your plan often. So whether that's weekly, monthly, quarterly, or you're coming up with a new product or service, set a scheduled cadence just to review the, uh, the business plan and update it. Then we have confirmation bias. Business owners are incredibly passionate about their ideas and goals. And of course they want their business to be an overwhelming success and rightfully so. But a common mistake they make is leveraging a business plan to showcase 100% optimism rather than cautious, being cautiously optimistic. Um, you know, they use every point to reinforce why their business is free from practically all, uh, all risk. But this is actually counterintuitive. As lenders know, this is not realistic. So when you play naive and don't highlight the possible risks with a plan to overcome them, you show you haven't really based your plan on logic and reality. So this is where leveraging your SWOT Kessel analysis, Porter's five forces frameworks can really benefit you. Another big mistake is the plan isn't based on market research and customer needs. So building off the point above, you wanna make sure your plan is based on real data, not on your assumptions. Make sure you do your research and collect valid data and information specific to your industry and convey this information in a manner that supports your business honestly. And remember, you wanna use both primary and secondary market research. Next, we have the executive summary, which is again written first, and it, um, which is something this actually happens a lot. An executive summary is written first, and then it inflates the business's worth. So the executive summary needs to be written last, taking a few key points from each of the areas of your business plan that you've already written, and then it's going to be the overview of the plan and helps your reader prepare for what's to come. So it should be clear and concise as to best capture their attention. Be factual and objective. Keep the language uh, you know, strong and positive. Be polished and brief and to the point and tailor it to your audience. Then lastly, poor structure and organization. So here are a few points on how actual content of your plan is written. You want to avoid poor grammar and run on sentences, as well as avoid using acronyms without descriptions. Another good tip is to write in the third person, writing from your business name's perspective. You want to be specific, uh, provide examples and evidence, and know what you're talking about and back up your claims. And next up, I want to cover a few actionable strategies and tactics you can implement to make a compelling business plan. So one is just to start general and get specific. So it's easy to get overwhelmed when you try to write the perfect full 20 to 40 page document, but your focus at the beginning stages of business is to actually do the work and get feedback on your product and service. You're trying to find product market fit. 
you can have an awesome business plan, but if you don't actually, or if you haven't actually built your thing and then put it into the hands of your ideal customers, there isn't really a business. So now this doesn't mean you shouldn't have a plan. By now, you know, it's not a good idea. So what should you do? Be proactive and plan, but start general. A tool like the business model canvas, again, I'll share in the resource section later, can help you get your idea out quickly. Once you've got this laid out, diving into the details and refining things becomes much more simple. Next, a good tip is review and update your plan regularly. Remember, the plan, it should constantly be revisited and adapting. Don't just write one, you know, secure your funding and then leave it on the shelf to collect dust. Keep it close by, refer and revise it often. Another good tip, consider all possibilities, the good and the bad. So in writing your plan, you can't just be focused on everything going well. That's a false reality. Instead, your plan should consider options that address your business key threats. So the golfer's motto of the more I practice, the luckier I get can apply here. You can practice making various decisions based on multiple scenarios. And all of this will help you make more proactive, calm and clear decisions in the future. Lastly, get outside opinions. There's so many amazing mentors and resources out there. Use them. It can be hard to spot mistakes when we are so head down and invested in our own vision. We need to avoid any biases we hold and get a better look at our business landscape as a whole. An outside perspective will help with this. So now I want to share some resources that can help you out on your business planning journey. So if you enjoyed this presentation and want to take your business plan to the next level, our business planning program, which starts uh, this fall, September 26th, is for you. Uh, here you'll get a deeper dive into each of the key components of a business plan that I've outlined in today's webinar. With our expert support and guidance, you'll confidently be able to write a bill and build a solid business plan. So our business planning program is an online expert led seven week program designed to help you create a comprehensive business plan. It's also virtual, so this allows accessibility for all Manitoban entrepreneurs, which is great. And we offer this program three times a year. So the next one's coming up in the fall and the investment is only $195 plus GST. So a great resource. Definitely encourage you to check that out. Uh, contact me or my colleague Eric if you want more information on this program and to see if you're a good fit. And next, I don't have enough time to go over all the details here in this resource section, but here are a few key resources um, that I really encourage you to check out. They're all hyperlinked, so you can dive into them. A lot of them have great uh, business planning templates. Um, you'll note that I've got the business model canvas linked here also, and a little image of what it looks like. I definitely encourage you to check these out, use the resources, um, but take action. Don't just you know fall for one of the mistakes I mentioned earlier, analysis paralysis put pen to paper, start building it, um, and then take action uh, continuously and you'll be amazed at how far you can go. And I wanted to end this presentation with a great quote by entrepreneur and educator Steve Blank. No business plan survives first contact with the customer. So always remember why you're in business. It's to serve a real need for someone. So if you aren't out there engaging with your current or ideal customer, your plan, no matter how perfect it might seem, most likely won't lead to success. So your business plan and you need to have the capacity for change. So that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in today's webinar. Um, now we'll open the floor up to some questions if you have any. So thanks so much, everyone.